Good morning, everyone. Well, this is my second start for this video. The first start kind of failed. Satan likes to get in and muck things up a little bit, and if we don't let him, he goes away. But we got to deal with it occasionally, time to time. You just tell him to flee in Jesus' name, and he has to. He has no power over God and his kingdom. He only has power over this world, and we are not of this world, so we have to do our best to stop him. All right. As you can see, it's overcast this morning. I pray that I can get this done before we start seeing any kind of rain coming down. There's some off and on for the next few days. That's okay. I've got pavilions right over here that I can run to if it starts raining. Okay, so anyhow, fitting for this morning, I was having trouble with my laptop. It seems to be stable now, but Satan tries to get in and interfere, and he's good at that. Lots of years of practice. And if he can discourage you, if you're trying to do something for, for God to help others, he will try to discourage you by making it difficult, by making it, you know, he interjects chaos and things that go wrong. My laptop, I couldn't control the mouse. I had to reboot it twice. You know, things like that. Whatever he can do, if it will discourage you, he's going to try. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't ever go away completely. But we can send him to the corner of the room in Jesus' name, and he has to stay there for a while. Okay. So, God can work even in chaos. And that's our subject for today. Even in chaos that Satan is doing, God is in control of it by allowing it to have limits. And he knows what Satan's going to do, when he's going to do it, where he's going to do it. So he positions his people, his Christians, where they can do the most good and where they can be safe from what Satan is doing. We're going to see so much chaos on this world uh, released here soon. How much of it we're going to be in, we don't know. That's why I've told you to be safe and prep a little bit because we don't know. We know we're going to avoid the worst of it. But we don't know how much we're going to go into that. The Antichrist is going to come, but we're not going to be part of that. So we have to be out of here before that, too. So there's a lot of things that are going to have to happen, and they can happen fast. Boom, boom, boom. God doesn't take time to, oh, that was a rough day. i got to go rest again. No, he, cre he, he rested for the seventh day after he created the heavens and the earth. All right. So don't be frightened by anything that's going on. Satan can't do anything to harm you. And even if God allows it for some reason, and he allows Satan to kill us, the Bible says, don't be afraid of people who can kill your body, only those that can take away your soul. And our soul, if we're Christians, belongs to Jesus, and he will defend it completely. We are safe. The wind is blowing a little bit. You can see my hair, uh, which is shorter, by the way. I got tired of the long hair. I was beginning to feel like I was becoming a camp, full-time camper, sort of like, uh, what's, what's the guy's name? I can't think of it now. The old Woodsman TV show where he had the bear fall on one lap around Jer well, Jeremiah Johnson. No, that wasn't him. But in any case, um, I was beginning to feel like that, and I wasn't going to go out and buy a uh, skin jacket with the little frills on it. I think at one time I might have had one, but I don't think I ever had it. Even as a kid, I had a coonskin cap. All right. So, Satan lives to bring chaos. He loves to do that. He loves to mess with us because we're God's. We're part of God's chosen now. Now we are adopted as Gentile Christians. We're adopted into his true chosen, which is the land of Israel and the people. But they don't want him right now. But things are about to get real for them. 
This war is about to end. We can see the end of the war. They're down to the last neighborhood. Rafa, it's on the border with Egypt. Egypt doesn't want these people coming into their country. <clears throat> Egypt knows what these people are like, and they don't want the Palestinians. And they boasted up. They've, they've come back in and they've added more tanks, more fencing. Hear that? You add fencing to your border when you want people to not come in or go out. <clears throat> Either way, you add fencing. Unless, of course, you want people to flood in, which is what we've done. We have so many bad people here that came with the good that this country is in definite trouble. They will have their their day. So anyhow, <clears throat> Satan loves to do all this. It masks what he's doing. It gets people frightened, which allows him to do even more chaos for him so that there's more people frightened. And then he's going to come in and say, here I am, I'm here to save the day. He will bring his Antichrist in to stop all the wars and bring peace. And everybody will carry flowers and we'll have sing-alongs and kumbaya. Yeah. And that will last for just a short while until he <clears throat> goes a little bit too far, which is what he likes to do. Okay, so let's take a look at some scriptures so that we know that God knows what's going on. <clears throat> Turn with me to Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done My counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure God will do what he wants to do Satan can never stop that Satan would have no power at all if God did not allow it Satan is kind of God's Attack dog, if you will. God doesn't like to punish. Even when he gets angry, he doesn't like to punish. So he lets Satan do the dirty work. I think that's his purpose here. To give us give people a choice between good and bad, because we've been exposed to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and to punish the people that choose the evil. Now, sometimes it punishes the good along with it, because we're close. That's okay. God takes care of us. He gives us strength, too. <clears throat> and we have a history of God doing what he wants against those who reject, who reject his authority, his power, his guidance. We see this all, all the time. Israel, the chosen people, come to God, things flourish, get away from God, they get attacked. Get back to God, things flourish get away from God, they're attacked. It's just, you know, <clears throat> and this this isn't happening like, you know, over the course of a weekend. These are over, you know, a few generations sometimes. <clears throat> We're going to see in the millennium, even without Satan down here, that we cannot stay on the good path forever because we are still sinners in our own right without Satan helping Okay, let's take a look at uh, Jeremiah 43.10. And say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and bring Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. So we've had Babylon for a long time. When they were disobedient with their tower, they become the punisher. When God needs to punish Israel, he brings them down. King of Babylon, my servant will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal pavilion over them. You reject me, I will send people down here to punish you. When he comes, he shall strike the land of Egypt and deliver to death those appointed for death, and to captivity those appointed for captivity, and to the sword those appointed to the sword. God set the timeline up beginning to end. He knows where everybody's special niche is. 
Now, God does have this righteous anger. We saw it in Jesus overturning the tables. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. <clears throat> the Father could have easily have done that if he could have been down here, but he couldn't, so he sent his Son. <clears throat> Again, challenge God, and God will come after you. Ezekiel 5.11 Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, Surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations. God doesn't like idols. Therefore, I will diminish you. My eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity. One third of you shall die of pestilence and be consumed with famine in your midst. One third shall fall by the sword all around you, and I will scatter another third to all the winds of the world. I will draw out a sword after them. You don't want to provoke God. Verse 13. Thus shall my anger be spent. I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be avenged. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal. When I have spent my fury on them. You can get away with pushing God for a little while. And this world is doing that. God is allowing it because Satan's going to get his 15 minutes of fame. Satan's going to say, well, you didn't give me an opportunity. Just like we say, well, it wasn't fair, God. You didn't give me an opportunity. He gives everybody plenty of opportunity. We don't use it. He can only provide the water, but if you choose not to drink, that's not his fault. So God is getting ready to punish this earth big time. And he's going to send Satan's bad guy, Satan's clone. Satan can't create anything new. It's already been created by God. He can only copy. So he's sending his copy, Christ, down here. And Revelation 13, 6. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemies against God to blaspheme, blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Satan doesn't have anything good to say about God. He wants his job. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. See, that's what's coming. That's why we don't want to be down here. He will over, he was, authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. That's the world, whenever that's used. The world is not paying attention. The world is all yelling at Israel to have a two-state solution. It has never worked, never been accepted by the Arabs. And it's been tried multiple times, and every time it's been tried, it's failed miserably. Israel is not going to listen. Now, this is going to provoke the whole world. We're going to see an Ezekiel war come out of this, probably. Not necessarily immediately, but we will see it. It has to happen soon. It has to happen before the tribulation. <clears throat> Revelation 13, 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, not God, the man that's been appointed, who's blaspheming God. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone's going to think that this is the Messiah return or coming to the earth for the first time. We know better. That's why we can't be here. We'd tell the world, and they wouldn't like it. All who dwell on the earth to worship him the Antichrist, whose names have not been written in the book of life or of the Lamb that was slain and the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. 
Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is not going to be pleasant. we got to get to the brink of <clears throat> scaring the world to death before the peace will have some meaning. It's not scared to death yet. We have to be snatched away so that we're not scared to death. But it's approaching. Now, does that mean that we're going to start finally seeing, you know, are we going to see before we leave the destruction of Damascus or Edom or any of the other stuff that's predicted? It's possible. So don't worry about it. Don't be frightened. How many times did Jesus say when he was giving us a prediction, don't be frightened. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. God knows all about everything that's happening, all the chaos that's going on. The chaos that's going to come out of letting people come across our border by the millions. <clears throat> Major cities, <clears throat> they just said in New York they found, you know, 70 people living in a basement, time sharing their sleep because it was just too many people in that little room. The big cities are going to be the danger zones. I would get out if you could. I don't know when we're going to get pulled out of here. I'm out here. It's quiet. I wouldn't know that there's all kinds of stuff going on in the world out here. You can find your place, your quiet place. But there's nobody here for me to talk to most of the time, so I do my videos. So that hopefully I can reach you. I've been enjoying your comments this morning. I, I like them. Every once in a while I'll get one that I'll try to read through. And then I gotta block the person because the person just is not here to listen, only to spew their garbage. There are people out there like that. There are well-meaning people who put out incorrect information. But if they're open to discuss, I will discuss it with them. But we've got our fringe cult religions that are out there that have been brainwashed so badly, you haven't got a chance. We cannot affect them at all. If God's Spirit has not given them a shining light to point in the right direction, you won't be able to talk to them and change them. And all they will do is waste your time. Try, but understand. I've done this long enough that I know the path that I'm heading down when I start talking to some of these people. I pray that they will eventually see the light. But right now, the only light coming is from Satan. We have to try to talk to everybody we can. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Just talk. You don't have to win souls. That's not your job. Now, if you can take a soul to heaven, that's all you can take. But your job is only to be a messenger. Just deliver the message. Learn the gospel first. Prophecy is secondary. They don't have to have you tell them about prophecy. All they got to do is turn on the news. And they will see it come to fruition. But tell them the gospel. That's the most important part. And that's not disputed. They may dispute prophecy. Oh, well, that already happened, or that's just a figure of speech. That's not really going to happen. You can argue that because it's in the future, but the Gospels are pretty solid. Jesus died for our sins. Accept his sacrifice, his free sacrifice. Repent, accept, and then live the Christian life. That's all there is to it. You can't do anything, and you don't need to. Saving souls is nice, but you don't need to. Being baptized is nice, but you don't need to. The thief on the cross didn't have time to do any of that. But he was repentant, sorry for what he did, and he called out to Christ. That's all you have to do. All right, until we meet in the clouds, God bless.